again. Welcome to Spink, another coin podcast. Today I'm going to mention the fifth sale in the series that we've been holding over the last 12 months of the academic collection of Lord Stuart Lee. We've called it the academic collection because uh, that's what it is, but also to remind you that Lord Stuart Lee has been studying English coins all his life, has produced one of the most informative and readable accounts of hammered uh, coinage from 1180 to 1551. And his collection pretty much encompasses uh, those coins. We had four sales already last year, the Anglo-Saxon Norman coins, the beginnings of the Middle Ages, the High Middle Ages, uh, which was part four, ending with Richard III, one small sale of gold in between, and here, part five, where the last one ended, this one begins with the Tudors and the Stuarts, and this takes us to the end of Lord Stuartby's period, because, of course, in the Tudor and Stuart period, we come to the end of medieval coinage and the beginning of modern coinage by way of the Renaissance. So we have here the Tudor coins, which give us, for the first time in English coinage, realistic portraits. You can't do better than the nine coins that we've chosen to illustrate on the back of the catalog, which give you portraits of all the monarchs, plus the Shield of England representing the Commonwealth, which takes us from Henry VII through the Tudors, Elizabeth, and then into the Stuarts, James, Charles, and ending with Charles II. For example, it's only a small coin, but it's got a super head of Henry VII. This is a half groat from London, and you have a profile, which in itself was a bit of a revolution because Usually, up till now, it had been a facing bust. But now we have a profile, which is a very Renaissance concept for a portrait, of the king. He's still wearing a huge crown to show that he is very much still a medieval monarch. But profile portrait, it's a recognizable portrait. And instead of the paraphernalia of a Gothic king on a Gothic throne, we have just the profile, nothing else and a collar rather than um, an ermine coat or a suit of armor, um, just the collar of his coat showing. So almost a Renaissance prince, although he's still wearing the large crown to show that he's king. After him, of course, Henry VIII goes one better and not a profile, not a facing, but a three quarters portrait, turned slightly to the right in true Renaissance style, and a very ugly face, because this is realistic. We have the heavy jowls and the snub nose and the mean look of the elderly Henry. This is a very good portrait, considering the character of the man, uh, how tetchy he was, um, rather like the Emperor Nero. He was a true, in his own mind, artist, um, and therefore wanted a real portrait. And you've got one here. It's a lovely little coin. That's a, a base groat, um, but it's a very good one. The third one I chose is his oldest daughter, Mary. And this, again, is in profile. She's facing the other way, not because there was any uh, reason to go one way or the other, but uh, perhaps it was her best side. I don't know. Anyway, she's facing to the left. And again, it's a recognizable portrait. She's got her hair long, loose, flowing behind her. And she's wearing a bodice with a big jewel at the throat. The crown is still there to show that she's queen, um, not as massive 
as in Henry VII's portrait. Um, but it's a recognizable portrait of Queen Mary, known unfortunately as Bloody Mary. So there are just three examples of how the portrait has come on in the first uh, half of the 16th century. Quite interestingly, on the back of the coinage, which up till now had always been just a plain cross, there is now a great variety. And on Mary's, we have not only the cross and the shield, but we have a new legend um, which has come into fashion really because of the Reformation. And there was a little campaign to persuade the people under Edward that the Reformation was a good thing. And that included lots of legends on coins on religious subjects. And Mary continued that. Of course, the little religious sayings could be taken either way. Um, but Mary continued this tradition that Edward had begun. Um, and that tradition went on for the next 300 years. So this is setting the stage for coinage right up until, indeed, Victorian times. And those of you who are familiar with Victorian coinage will remember the Ferrari when they forgot to put Dei Grazia on the Victorian coinage. And they were known as the godless coins. And they were quickly restored. So these religious um, legends, which changed with remarkable uh, speed, um, several different legends often appearing at the same time during a reign, were initiated in this period, the period of the Reformation in England. So a fascinating chapter of history, and it's reflected in the coinage, and an intriguing period of artistic development, which is reflected in the portraits. This is the end of English hammered coinage. Lord Stuartby's book ends halfway through the period, 1551. Um, after Henry VIII, we have his young son, Edward, who becomes king at a very tender age, um, but whose reign ushers in the remarkable revolution in English coinage, the sixpence and the shilling, and even the crown piece. So up until then, the coinage has been based on the penny, the silver penny. Now we have new denominations, large denominations, and the silver crown brings English coinage into line with continental coinage, where there was the large silver crown sized piece. This is why Lord Stuart B. finishes in 1551. The sale goes up to the end of the Stuarts. It's a, again, academic rather than investment quality collection, but some of the pieces are exceedingly rare. And although the beauty might be lacking in some of the mid-century portraits, because of course we have the debased coinage of Henry and Edward, um, the academic interest is very high. The sale is online. You can see all the coins illustrated very clearly, and you can enlarge the illustrations, which is a real bonus. So I encourage you to look at the photographs and study them, because there's a lot to be learned from all the collections, all the sales, and the five catalogues in total. Um, give you a remarkable um, span of English coinage, English hammered coinage, um, the best collection to have come on, onto the market in the last few years. In April, we will be selling the final coins of Lord Stuartby, English coins of Lord Stuartby, uh, which fall just outside this collection, either before the skeets or after the more modern coinage. Um, plus a few little stragglers that made their way to us um, after we had started selling the coins. So that's Lord Stuartby. 
the final part, part five, um, sales on the 28th of March, um, at the end of the month, uh, and it's a full day sale. We look forward to seeing you, but participate online if you can't make it. The coins are on view now. In fact, there are people viewing them now as we speak. And they're on view, as I say, on the website. Uh, and that will be the end of Lord Stuart B. You won't have another Lord Stuart B podcast. So savor this one and come to the sale. Thank you very much.